after the game on Thursday, Martin O'Neill wondered just what effect a crashing disappointment would have on his side. Well, these are always imponderables after European defeats, but the wait is now over. And in the next few minutes, we'll find out against the side which lost their last league game at home. No Paul Lambert, of course, and after that horrendous tackle on Thursday, no Jackie McNamara, who's lucky still to be in one piece, by the way. But getting his debut, the new signing from Dundee, Robert Douglas, who stands, I'm sure, on the threshold of a new and prosperous career. Well, despite that reverse against Infirmland at home, St. Johnson retained the same 11, hoping to revenge that 2-0 victory Celtic had at Perth in the last game. And this 18-year-old will test their mettle. Keegan Parker has just extended his contract for another three years and with a total of 12 goals in all competitions this season. A marvellous prospect. Referee is Kevin Toner, son of a famous defensive stalwart in Scottish football, Willie Toner. While Sir Johnson always find it very difficult here at Celtic Park, it's not that they are overwhelmed, it's just that they find it very difficult uh, to get away from a Celtic team who seems to relish playing against them, but revenge is on their mind, of course. Fresh in the minds, that 2-0 uh, defeat that St. Johnson had in the last league game up at Perth. And a free kick immediately to Celtic, and this man, Lubo Moravchik, announcing, of course, that he'll quit at the end of the season and wants to do so with a triumphant team. Not cleared all that successfully, a bit of a hesitation there, and eventually Mulby's had up safely with Alan May. Here's Darren Dodds. Good run by Evers, the ball is still in play, the final ball's supposed to be useful. Dasovic, that's a good save by Douglas. Well, Douglas will be delighted to get a save like that behind him in this is debut, but I don't think this was hit with any great conviction. I think he tried to shove it away and angle it, but nevertheless, the goalkeeper got his save in. Good interception there by Stuart McCluskey. He did think that was heaven sent uh, for Agat to take on, but they do get the corner kick with nine minutes gone of this game. Enticing ball, and look at Larson. Well, I think Larson's going through one of these phases where last season he would have put, oh, the last half dozen chances I've seen him get in different games, he would have put it away like that there, just not running for him. Gentlemen, easily behind it, Moravchik. Igat should pick this up, Bowling with him. for a little bit of support. Thompson's got a good left foot, of course. Might get it in yet. Makes it aside, and that's a great goal. Suck it. Yes, he took it so well. And he simply wore down the St. Johnson defence. Good touches, good combination. And first of all, Thompson, look at the way he shrugged his way through there. And then eventually, something with that positive finish. He had only one intention, and that was to drift it well away from the goalkeeper. His eighth goal of the season, and just as good as any of the others he's already scored. Seem to be taken on the top of the ankle there, Silla. Peta tramping down that left-hand side. Kept his feet well. That's a free kick. It's very, very close to the box. And I think uh, the, the lack of ability of this and Johnson team to tackle cleanly, and I think which cost them the first goal, was manifest there again. They're trying to cover it. No, didn't get hold of it properly. Good play by St. Johnson. A little bit too square, but up comes Bolin. 
that from the outside, Bobby Petter. Now Dasovic. Crane, uh, good effort. And that's the best uh, concentrated, fluent move we've seen by St. Johnson in a match. Dasovic eventually with a square ball and then a, the effort by Kane. And they certainly need more of that. They've had a lot of possession, but little of that. Evers. St. Johnson working themselves into a tangle. Need a clean break there. Well, that's him, yes. Cleanly taken. He's hardly been in the game. But then, that's a mark of quality. And we've seen it in different circles this week already by men who can score goals out of virtually nothing. We saw Simone do it. We saw Laslam do it. I know that man there. Difficult angle. Defender bearing down at him and yet puts it away. 2 0. left-hand side, picking out Moravchik with great accuracy. That's all Sin! Oh, what a goal! Oh. For a moment, I thought that was going to hit the post, or that the goalkeeper would have got to it. No wonder he's delighted. In fact, nobody does that better than he. Well, Alan Main may be asking himself the question, ought I to have got to that? But you've got to give it to the quality of the ball played into goal. The Celtic go three up with seven minutes of this half remaining. Look at the way it fairly whistled in. I think uh, Main was deceived by the way the ball just kept going. He had judged himself to... He placed right in the middle of the goal and lost out as a result. That's a beautiful ball. No cover there by Silla. I just touched away and Silla must have been dreaming to have allowed Peta to get in a, oh, about six or seven yards behind him and in an onside position. What a curve in it! Another corner kick. Ooh, this. Would you believe that two of the St. Johnson players fell out there and Silla swung his arm round? And if that had made contact, well, I, I must confess I was distracted there because the two St. Johnson players had a massive fallout and they're still at it. goes the halftime whistle Celtic in a commanding lead at halftime the first goal an excellent strike uh, by that man then for Sutton but there was a long period in the game when you felt people were on the front sandwiches because there's a lot of silence and then suddenly the lull was broken by a superb goal by Henrik Larsson I pointed out at the time if you're not in the game all that much you can still produce finishes like that pure class the third one, Moravchik, superb ball played in. And there was a goalkeeper stranded in the middle of the goal, rather surprised by the pace of it, apart from the flight. So Celtic, as I said, very commandingly leading by three goals to nil at halftime. Well, I wouldn't say it's exactly a totally impossible task, but it's very close to it, that's for sure, for St. Johnson. Coming back... Uh, against the Celtic team at Celtic Park, three up. This is one of the problems any team would like to face. Better. Ausilla, the man who was involved in that uh, little incident. At the end of that 
first half still there. Here's King. Well, after that second goal, you got the impression that a lot of the St. Johnson players had lost a taste for this match. If that happens, of course, they would suffer even more. Oh, well played by the defender. Seems to have regained his composure again after that incident. Moravchik. Petar, that's well judged. Great save by Maine. The kind of ball that this man Sutton gobbles up. Now look at the instinctive reflexive action of uh, the goalkeeper there. Well, did he sort them out at halftime? It was a matter of uh, taking a very demoralized looking team and getting them to discuss things. Silla did that well. Jasovic didn't. Thompson must put it through here. Now then, Larson ought to put it away. When he gets a chance like that, he makes it look ridiculously simple. Of course, it never ends. Second in the game for the man, and they will live wide open there. Look at that chip. Reminiscent of another one somewhat earlier in the season. Celtic four up. Easy ball there to Dasovic. Better play by St. Johnson. Connolly will run in the outside, and that's not a bad effort. Once again, it was a difficult angle for the lad. He was what running one way, and he had to turn and try and squeeze it in the other. Just that little bit difficult for him. That's a superb ball. Look at uh, Agat coming in now. Larson, he's going to let fly himself. That wasn't far away. Alan Main remained rooted to the spot here. And we'll see how wise he was not to go for it. Just shaving away. Well, Celtic can go forward with impunity now, of course. Game well, well won. Ravchik may go for it himself. He does! Not far away. He's annoyed with himself. Well, he's, he's already done it up in the match, but that would have climaxed a great afternoon for him. And that gone in just centimeters out. Another substitution that looks like Greg Russell is about to come on for um, Valley Connolly. Yes, there you are. It's a decent ball, and uh, that deceived the Sunday defence, which is something of a rarity this afternoon. So let's watch it again. A turning a corner kick there. to turn back though well, I think uh, well her in the first tackle he's missed all day and that's a goal neatly picked up well as that ball was played inside there so Russell the substitute popping inside the box to slip it away to make it 4-1 and that takes a little bit of the bad look off this result for St. Johnson. Angled away, but nothing much more than that. They've left it a little bit late, but good luck to them. They've enjoyed seeing that go in the back of the net. This McCulloch 
gone right into the center of defense for Ken and that's a useful ball and Yolby is there. I think uh, some people felt it was the final whistle. It's offside, in fact. And there is the final whistle. Robert Douglas conceded one goal today, but applauds the crowd, and that man will be happy enough after what happened in Thursday. First goal coming from Chris Sutton. Dynamic finish after Celtic had driven away into the penalty area. Then that glorious breakaway by Henrik Larsson, who hadn't been in the game all that much until then. Then Moravchik with that superb cross, come lob, come shot. And at the very end, the delicate chip by Larsson. And then coming on as a, a substitute, Craig Russell getting that uh, consolation goal there. But the most important use, I, I think, for all the challengers in the title is that Celtic have bounced back from Thursday night's defeat. Final score, Celtic 4, St Johnston 1. There's a great um, a, a great old feeling in the dressing room at this minute that the lads, I mean, we may lose matches. That's, that, I mean, anybody can lose football games, but you know that they're, they're going to be up for the match. They're, they're going to get themselves absolutely and utterly tuned into it and take it on from there. Sandy, given that Celtic had a very hard game on Thursday, did you feel you had a really positive, realistic chance of getting a result today? Uh, you've always got a chance. It's very difficult coming to Celtic Park and Ibrox. Uh, you're playing against real quality players. And we felt that you know Thursday night might take a lot of Celtic. But when you look at it, they're professional players, very well paid for it, and they're very much athletes. So really three days is enough to recover, and I think Celtic showed that today. Robert, are you feeling a little bit nervous about coming out here today? No, not at all. Uh, I've waited a month to play, uh, probably the longest in about five years. I was delighted to get a game. Uh, Jonathan gave us great pointers before the game and he was brilliant with us, so uh, we were in last night, we spoke about all aspects and he was great today, so I've got to thank him for that. John wants to play and I want to play, the main thing is Celtic won. So he's taking it well? Yeah, he'll want to play, There's no, every player wants to play Celtic, every player should want to play any club, so uh, he was fine.